Yes, so yes, so this is Frackers Mo Fire, Mo Fire Fuka Fuka representing Wave for Way Media. And I just wanted to drop a few thoughts with my people because in a, in a little bit of time I'm gonna be catching a flight. Real quickly, um the big news since yesterday and today, or more less sure attacking Peter Obi heavily on social media <laughs> first he released a video earlier where he's talking about Peter Obi not having done enough for Anambra State as a governor that Peter Obi and his uh, Labour Party should be the ones approaching him for him to accommodate them in a merger in a coalition and then people didn't find that funny at all that he was attacking Peter Obi in that regards because Peter Obi had a wonderful track record as the governor of Anambra State. Very unmatched by any other person, unmatched by any other governor anywhere. Even the governor, his successor, uh, Obiano, received a handover note with millions of dollars in foreign reserves and investments. And even a whole lot of money in the billions left over it was so much that he even had to build airport from there build an airport from there so uh, the attack to a lot of people who are like what attacking peter obi no way so peter obi is like that newly discovered saint i'm not saying a new saint and by the way nobody's a saint let me put it that way but he's like the newly discovered saint meaning a lot of people didn't know much about him they didn't know much about the good things that he had done in the past as a governor. That's why it's like that's why the it's like a revolution now. People just want to jump into that bandwagon of Peter Obi, Peter Obi, Peter Obi. But anyway, before we go further, let's watch that video where Shore um criticized Peter Obi and his uh we say he never built schools, he never built uh hospitals and all that stuff. And um let's 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 watch that real quickly. Let's watch. That the Labour Party had become an orphanage, orphanage for politicians that are homeless. It didn't take long before our man ran there when he became homeless. The Labour Party should not have in his company somebody who managed 13 months of strike, worker strike in Anambra State. The reason OB left PDP was because they outplayed him with transactional politicking. Where is the structure of Labour Party, you should ask yourself. In 2019, the Labour Party presidential candidate got 5,000 votes. I was allocated 33,000 votes. So even if you want to look at structures, the structure that delivered 33,000 votes is probably better and bigger than that of 5,000 votes. The Labour Party and the Peter Obi people should come and join us. We are the ones who know how to stand up for you. You said you were governor of a number of states. When you were governor, did you build any schools, universities that your children could attend? If the question is no, why are you lying? Did you build any hospitals? in that state that you can go for for treatment if you fall sick if it is no why are you lying did you do any quality roads if it's no why are you lying i am not here to do ethnic politics i'm not here to do religious politics i'm here for the liberation of the nigerian people <laughs> wow so a lot of people felt this is very laughable that Shore will get at Peter Obi in that manner so and people are wondering why what are the motives what's going on and even today he sent out a tweet because Peter Obi just flew to Egypt to do some comparable studies on governance um, finance sector different stuff so that there will be a comparable study so they can manage Nigeria better which is supposed to be a good thing actually, but Shawere thought it wasn't necessary that the election is nine months away 
and him going to learn it now just means that he's not ready. I think the book of the argument is that he's trying to say that Peter Obi is not ready. So on Twitter, people are asking him back, are you ready yourself? I think one of the uh, one of the uh, follow his followers, Mr. Paul, replied him and said, ah, but this is supposed to be a good thing. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. And the social media is going ablaze on that. And people are wondering, why would he be attacking Peter Obi? What are the motives? Well, let's quickly look at some of the things that could be the reasons why he's attacking Peter Obi the way he's doing it. Now, Shawere, Omoyele Shawere is a good friend of mine. He's a good person, a nice gentleman. In 2018, when he ran for uh, the presidency, uh, we for We Media, my media company in New York and New Jersey, organized town hall meetings with him where he came and he spoke to a lot of the people. And that kind of kicked off his campaign years ago. So I still believe in him as a person of principle. So I'm really surprised that some of the words and the, some of the things he had said about Peter Obi, believe me, no sure, he probably said those because he didn't know much about, about Peter Obi. If he knew much about Peter Obi, I, thought, I don't think he will be willfully or intentionally misrepresenting facts on Peter Obi. So um, a lot of people need to be schooled on who Peter Obi is. Yes, even on this platform, I remain apolitical, very apolitical. But we are here to say the truth. We have to speak the truth because it's true. Because it's the only thing that can set us free. So let's look at some of the reasons. I think Shaore was the social media guru, and that kind of took his popularity pretty high. So he built his image on social media, and the bulk of his supporters are the youth and progressive-minded people on social media. And though, and that's the same group that's joining Peter Obi and his campaign. That same group that was disaffectioned, uh, disaffected and irritated by the traditional Nigerian politics and politicking, they went to Shawere because they were tired of the same old... So now, Peter Obi is out and that, a bulk of that same group is rushing over to Peter Obi as the quote-unquote new saint. Like I said, no one is a saint. But it's like, Peter Obi is like this new discovery. It's like Eureka to a lot of people. They're saying Eureka. Like, where had where had he been? They didn't know. So they're jumping over. So Shawere, as a smart guy, is looking at his support base, and it's eroding day by day. And wh while he's eroding, where are they going? He knows, you know, he, he does all this uh, uh, polling and understanding, the scientific detailing and polling. He knows that they're living... They are going to Peter Obi. So on a, on a daily basis, Shore is losing supporters to Peter Obi. And not even to Atiku. And not even to Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu. So that explains why he can't really be attacking them as much as he's attacking Peter Obi. So he's feeling uncomfortable. So I think Peter Obi's camp and Shore's camp can come together and get things sorted out. And they can actually have a coalition that can be the that can represent the aspirations of the Nigerian youth and the progressive-minded Nigerians. They want to see good governance. And Shore has a lot of ideas. And Peter Obi has not just the ideas, but he had been a governor. He had done it before. So Peter Obi and Shore can come together as a wonderful force, as opposed to uh, uh, Shore attacking Peter Obi. When Shore does that, one thing he will, I, I can assure him, if he attacks Peter Obi, hoping that, that P2B support base will come back to him. No, it's not going to happen that way. When you do that, you're killing the spirit of the progressive-minded Nigerians, the spirit of the youth, their aspirations, their hopes that these things can get better. They're not going to go back to you. They will just get so disaffected and this, this, they will just say, you know what? They're not going to vote for uh, Tinubu. They're not going to vote for Atiku. And they will not go back to Shawere. So leave Article, leave uh, uh, Peter Obi alone. Talk to your support base. Talk to Peter Obi's base. Both of you guys can merge and get things done better. So that's one of the reasons. And some, uh, I was saying something about maybe it is professional jealousy. I don't want. I don't believe that as a good person. Sure, right? I don't want to say he's jealous because some people are saying, "Oh, he's jealous. He's jealous." I just call it professional jealousy. I'll take you back to when I was in New York. Uh, as a student a couple of years, but um, many years back, actually. That was, uh, after graduating, I was um, a biomedical researcher. So, and we're working on, uh, I believe, 
it was um, cyclic hydrocarbons. There was this great experiment we were doing. So it was an assignment for me to come up with something. And then I had other people that were working with me. There's an Indian friend of mine. His name was Raji. Rajiv Panika. That's his name. So he was working with me, but it was like a big competition. And I, I got I got the uh, answer first. I got the expected result first. And he was so terrified. He was jealous. He ran to the professor, Professor uh, Banerjee, an Indian guy also, and lied about... He told him that I, I, I used... Kone Kone ways to get to the answers that I wasn't this and that. It was just some stupid stuff. So when I found out that's what he did, I called him and said, why would you do that? So he was shocked. He was embarrassed. So he was begging me. He said, oh, my friend, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Okay? Please. The problem is professional jealousy. I was, I was professionally jealous of you. Please forgive me. I know you're not from India like me, but I love you like my brother. I can tell you right now that you are just as Indian as I am, and I love you and forgive me for this professional jealousy. My brother, please. I was professionally jealous. Forgive me. Okay? And guess what? I forgive him. So professional jealousy sometimes is some things people do just to, you know. And again, he might be shorter might also be trying to, you know, get himself in a position where he can negotiate later from a position of strength. Maybe he wants to show that, you know, he wants to show some toughness so that when Obi sits at the table with him and says, well, what do we do? How do we go? He can, you know, get some inducements or some incentives, some gra 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 bra bra gra, 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 gra whatever. It could be anything, but it's not healthy for the Nigerian youth it's not healthy for the progressives in Nigeria that are yearning for that new crop of leadership, for that new crop of understanding, sensitization, democracy, the real democracy. So please, Shore, instead of attacking Peter Obi, befriend him. The real enemy is not Peter Obi. You should be attacking the real polytrickians. I call them polytrickians because they trick you for your votes and they keep it moving. Frekas Mo Fire. Mo Fire Fuka Fuka. I remain. And please follow us and continue this conversation. Give us your sake. Give us your thoughts on this matter. Mo Fire. <music> Oh, fire. Fuka, fuka, fuka.